Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step the way to value a company so we can figure out if we should buy the stock. The first thing we do is enter the financial information into my discounted cash flow model. We then add the debt and equity information. Finally, we determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. We then look at the financial ratios and compare them to its competitors. I'm going to walk you through the entire process so you can do it on your own after watching the video. Make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions. The company we're going to look at is Iron Mountain. And Iron Mountain stores and protects companies' assets and files. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $8.1 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. And they're a mid-cap company, which means the market cap is between two and $10 billion. Let's see how much they're trading at. One share of stock is $28. And next we're gonna get the free cash flows. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. And that's exactly what we're doing in this video. I'm pulling right now the actual free cash flows for the past four years. Let's look at the net income. That's the profit and loss on the income statement. And that's also positive every year. So, so far everything is looking good. Now we need the revenue, which are the sales for each year. And it appears to be that the revenue is increasing. And the numbers look pretty consistent year to year, so we should get a good value. Let's look at the capital structure of the company so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They pay $426 million of interest on their debt. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to liabilities section. Current debt of $389 million, that's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of $8.3 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. The interest they pay in their debt is 4.9%. Interest payments are tax deductible. Let's get their effective tax rate. The income before tax is $328 million. And the income tax is $59 million. So their effective tax rate is 18%. So the cost of debt is the interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate, which is 4%. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. The S&P has a beta of one. This has a beta of 0.69, so the stock is less volatile than the market. That's a good thing. You want a stock that's not too volatile, not too risky. Let's get their current assets. We need to calculate the current ratio later, current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. That's $1.2 billion. And let's look to see what the assets are. $193 million of cash. Net receivables are accounts receivables, the amount other companies owe you, minus the accounts receivable that are not expected to be collected. Because you always have a small portion of receivables that a company usually does not receive. Also, they have other current assets, and we don't know what this is. It's 192 million. We could look on a 10K to figure it out. Let's get the current liabilities. That's $1.9 billion. This is what the company owes within the next 12 months. And 389 million of that is current debt. 324 million of accounts payable. That's the money the company owes its creditors and suppliers. 380 million of accrued liabilities. These are expenses the company accrued but has not yet paid. Then they have 274 million of deferred revenue. This is the money the company collected but it has not yet delivered the product or service yet. Let's look at the stockholders equity. That's 1.5 billion. That's total assets minus total liabilities. Let's see what the stockholders equity is. They have 2.9 million of common stock. When a company IPOs or issues shares, they apply an arbitrary number. They call that the par value to each share. It's usually like a penny or a fraction of a penny. And that's just a way for companies to keep track of the number of shares that they have in a market. It has nothing to do with the market cap or the value of the stock. 
They have negative 2.6 billion of retained earnings. That's all the prior year's net income minus all the prior year's dividends. So a lot of REITs seem to have negative retained earnings because REITs pay a lot of, out in dividends. And they have negative 260 million on accumulated other comprehensive income. This is $260 million of unrealized losses on securities that have gone down in value, but a sale has not occurred yet for the loss to be realized. And if you notice, these three numbers, common stock, retain earnings, and accumulated other comprehensive income, do not equal the $1.5 billion of stockholders' equity. It seems like Yahoo Finance doesn't list every single item on the balance sheet. You'd have to go to the company's website or the 10K or the 10Q to see all the detail. Let's look at the operating income. That's the earnings before interest and taxes, $798 million. That's how much money the company makes on its regular operational business, but before it pays interest and taxes. Let's look at the capital structure of the company. They have 86% debt. The cost of debt is 4%. They have 14% equity, and the cost of equity is 7.6%. So the weighted average cost of capital is 4.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows up here in blue. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all free cash flows after year four. That's $12.4 and we estimated these numbers based off of the prior financial information. We then discounted these numbers in blue using the weighted average cost of capital. We discounted the numbers back to today's dollars. And if you sum the numbers in green, that's the value of the company according to the model, and that's $13 billion. And if we divide that number by 289 million shares, we get an intrinsic stock price of $45. It's trading at $28. So it's trading at a 38% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're a little higher. They're at $56 a share. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. So it looks like it hit the low 40s a few years back, but the stock has dropped a lot ever since. Even though the stock has come down a lot, the company offers a service that's always going to be needed. They store and protect documents, and regardless of the economic environment, companies are, are going to always need that. Let's look at the financial ratios to see if we get more information. They have a bad PE, a good price to sales, and a bad price to book. So price to earnings ratio is stock price over earnings per share. To get earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. This indicates investors are willing to pay $30 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales ratio is stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. This indicates investors are willing to pay $2 for $1 of sales. Price to book of 5.5, that's stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. And this indicates investors are willing to pay $5.50 for $1 book value. They have a really bad current ratio and a decent ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current liabilities, which means they're gonna probably take on more debt. ROE is net income over equity, so they provide their equity holders a pretty good return of 18%. Interest coverage ratio 1.9. They can't even cover the interest payment two times. After interest, they have to pay taxes and they have to pay out dividends as well. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. In the same industry as Iron Mountain is American Tower, Crown Castle, Hannon Armstrong, and Power Reed. And a lot of analysts look at the funds from operations ratio when valuing REITs. And this number is the price of the stock over funds from operations over shares outstanding. And the lower the better. And Iron Mountain has the lowest ratio in this category. And to look at the more traditional ratios, Iron Mountain has a better than average price to earnings. They have the best price to sales. They're better than average in price to book. Worse than average in current ratio. Better than average in ROE. They have the worst debt number at 
they're pretty leveraged. And they're lower than average in market cap. The average is 38 billion, they're 8 billion. So let me know what you think in a video in the comments. Thanks for watching.